Beretta in a box, part two. It's not in the box anymore, but we got a bunch of parts here. We're going to look at some of these parts and see what the differences are. Here's the triggers. This was one of the uh, goals of this project here, was to take out the plastic over-molded trigger and uh, put in the solid metal trigger. You can't really see a whole lot of difference there, but uh, the metal one feels a little bit better on the finger. You kind of see there that it's a little smoother, got a slightly different texture. Um, I don't know, metal one's going in. Some people were worried about them breaking, but I don't think there's been uh, enough statistics to make me worry about it. So, in the box. Okay, so then we've got the uh, slide release levers. And uh, here is the stealth lever as compared to the standard lever. And you can see the difference in how wide that piece is right there. Um, another difference is the stealth lever does not have the slot in the end of it. That the standard lever has a slot. If you can see that slot there. I don't know where the focus point is on this camera. This isn't really the right camera for this. Um, the other side of that lever engages that slot. You might be able to see that right there. So you wouldn't be able to use the right side lever with the stealth because it doesn't have that slot. Okay, and then we've got the uh, decocking levers. This is the uh, standard batwing lever that likes to tear your hands up. Here is the pretty much flat stealth lever that comes came originally on the compact carry. And then here is the uh, new Beretta lever. It's kind of a combination of the other two. Now, I don't know what guns this comes on now, if it's on compact carries or everything or, or what it's on, but it's a pretty nice lever. Um, it's kind of a uh, refined version of the Langdon Tactical Fugly lever, which uh, I got some of those around here too. Uh, they were just the standard um, lever reworked, I believe, by Langdon Tactical. Uh, another thing about the factory original non-carry lever is that it has the ball in the spring. That gives you your detent for your safety position. The other two levers don't have that ball or spring. Also, on the F version that has the safety, it has this ear. That ear goes down through a slot in the slide right here. You kind of see through right there where that ear goes down in there. And it pushes the trigger bar down to disengage it uh, uh, from the trigger and the sear. The trigger bar, draw bar, whatever you want to call that. So those are the decocking levers. Um, other things perhaps noteworthy are the various magazine release buttons that come with it. They got a small, medium, and large. You can get them in a kit of three. Um, the compact carry comes with the large. And uh, I'm not sure which one of these. Um, I guess this is the small that came in the non-carry version. This is the uh, locking block, unlocking block, whatever you want to call it. The barrel sits on that lug and as things move back and forth that rotates the barrel. The, uh, the locking system, there's a couple of bosses inside this thing right there is one of them. And then uh, the uh, edge of the injection port is the other one. And uh, there's lugs on the barrel. As the barrel rotates, it locks up right here. 
and right here and then as it rotates back it unlocks so that it can move and that's all controlled by the lug right here this also catches the barrel so things can't go too far this is held into the frame by this groove right here and uh, that's where that unlocking lever uh, sits as you push it in it just locks in place um, pull it down and pull it out all right the um, extractor it's kind of a neat extractor it actually has a curve to it right here kind of tough to see on this camera um, it sort of fits the uh, round of the case a little better than just a flat one it's got this red thing on top that's supposed to be a loaded chamber indicator it doesn't really work that well the mainspring would come apart um, right here on the very end of it is a little uh, like one coil of a spring or something it's not really a keeper clip it's uh, acting as a keeper clip I see no need to take it apart there's really nothing in there that I need to get to it is a double spring um, a spring inside a spring they're wrapped the other direction that's so they don't lock up if they were both wrapped the same way then they'd hook and bind on each other but by being wrapped opposite directions um, they can move freely one over the other okay some other little pins here um, that is the um, recessed area that the uh, trigger spring um, went in to hold that pin in place this is that other pin uh, that was held in place by the tail of the sear spring that's where I reached down inside uh, the magazine well to release that sear spring let that pop out you probably could just drive that out without trouble but again I've seen springs get bent doing that alright um, here is that nail head pin that I was talking about that went through the hammer shaft there's a little slot right there in the hammer shaft and uh, that's where this other little spring I hope I didn't lose it um, where'd that spring go there it is hiding so that little spring just kind of pops into that slot and uh, catches the groove in the end of that pin Oh, what else we got here um, again this is the slide release and uh, or, or the takedown lever and its pin that goes in that notch or its spring that goes in that notch now we got a few more springs in here firing pin spring firing pins all nice and clean now um, this is the cutout here where the uh, roll pin um, for the extractor went through um, and that keeps that firing pin from coming out with the extractor in place this little cutout right here is where the firing pin block rides um, it won't let the gun fire until um, this is pushed up and releases it so that it can move otherwise it's locked by that piece some other miscellaneous um, parts here this is the sear and uh, the hammer of course this uh, you can see right here would catch on that first notch right there that is the half cock position and as the hammer goes all the way further back it locks in that position right there and the sear pushes forward to release the hammer um, the sear is pushed forward by this little part of the draw bar right here that little part of the draw bar catches on this part of the sear right here 
and it pulls it forward to disengage it from the hammer. Also, this is where the um, firing pin safety block lever, um, it rides right there uh, when it's It rides down here in your normal firing and it rotates it up in this position we'll cut that out of the video I don't know if there's anything else worth talking about here it's probably time to put this thing back together so uh, I guess we'll stop this video. Here's a little O-ring. Um, not sure uh, how long that thing lasts, but it seems to still be working. All it does is provides a little resistance as this goes into the um, frame here and uh, kind of holds it in place when these other parts are on there. Um, Okay, I guess that's all we really got to talk about about these parts here. There'll be mention of more of them as the thing goes back together. So that's it for now. Thanks.